Allô Allô I can see when I lose. Ndakuja kuja mbuzi. Mchinjo. Now ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the central committee meeting of uh, ODM which has met um, most of this morning. We have discussed several issues and we have a statement that is going to be read to you on our behalf by the Secretary General of ODM, Honorable Edwin Sifuna. Uh, thank you, Excellency. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. As uh, the party leader has told you, we have had a meeting of the Central Committee. It has been full house, except with the apologies of the uh, Deputy Party Leader, uh, Honorable Ali Hassan Joe, who is in Mecca. So this is a statement. We have had a meeting of the Central Committee, which is the top decision organ, making organ of the Orange Democratic Movement Party. This meeting took place against the backdrop of ongoing efforts to reinvigorate the party through various activities, including but not limited to the holding of grassroots elections. There are also a number of emerging and running national issues affecting Mwanainchi, among them the crisis in the health sector as manifested in the ongoing doctor strike, the crisis of funding in our schools and colleges and the scam of subsidized fertilizer. The committee meeting therefore took stock of the state of the party and that of the entire nation. A key issue canvassed at this meeting is the dire state the party finds itself in as a result of a government-instigated denial of funding. The Political Party's Fund was established to enhance democracy by promoting active participation by individuals in political life. Among other things, it is meant to cover election expenses of the political parties and broadcasting of the policies of the political parties. Unfortunately, this fund has become the death knell of parties uh, it was meant to support. Since coming to office, the Kenya Kwanzaa regime has pursued a deliberate policy of denying funds to political parties, effectively crippling their operations. Key activities, including the planned elections, party elections, become challenging to plan and execute because of the regime's refusal to release funds to political parties. Clearly, the aim is to kill all political parties except UDA. We demand, therefore, that the funds be immediately released to parties in amounts and the manner stipulated in law. Be that as it may, the committee has resolved to kick off the party grassroots elections on the 27th of April 2024. The exercise will be staggered as follows. On the 27th, we shall have the exercise in three counties, namely Kwale, Busia and Siaya. Then on the 29th, we shall have grassroots elections happening in Kajiado, Migori, and Wajia counties. And on 30th of April, we shall have the exercise in Kisi, Vihiga, and Muranga counties. A further timetable covering the next batch of counties shall be released in due course. On rebuilding, rejuvenation, and reforms, the committee agreed on the need to continually grow ODM into a party that is strong both structurally as well as ideologically with the ability to provide effective leadership on local, national, and international affairs. In this regard, we agreed to continue with the ongoing membership registration, while at the same time working on the grassroots and national elections. With pride and satisfaction, the committee took note of the ongoing preparations by various leaders and members to vie for various positions. We have noted immense interest in the party. We are particularly encouraged by the number of young men and women who have expressed a desire or an interest in vying for various leadership positions within ODM. It is the greatest assurance that the party has a future and is still seen as a viable tool for national leadership. We encourage our members to pursue their ambitions with a sense of responsibility to strengthen and not weaken our unity and solidarity, and to focus all our attention and energy on that big and main task of any political party, which is to take power. We therefore agreed not to allow 
election activities to be the source of divisions or cause cracks in ODM. The elections must be seen as a friendly match and not a do-or-die affair. We deliberated on the developments in other political parties and their implications for the nation and for democracy. In particular, the committee expressed deep concerns over developments in the UDA party, where public officers paid by taxpayers from all political formations have been appointed as party officials to various organs. We are staring at the return of the party state system last seen in the 1980s, where party leaders and public servants were one and the same thing. What followed was a youth wing with watchdog or surveillance responsibilities over the entire nation. We take the position that this development is wrong. It is a recipe for chaos and dictatorship and partisanship in the management of public affairs. Consequently, we demand that all those people who have been named as UDA officials must immediately resign from public service. There is no way they will serve two masters, the public and the UDA party. The meeting further noted with concern what appears to be coordinated attempts to de derail the implementation of the NADCO report. It is becoming apparent that some, if not all, of these court cases are state-sponsored. If indeed elements in the regime are having second thoughts regarding proposals they signed onto out of their own volition, they should come out clearly to say so instead of sponsoring these cases in court. On funding of education, we are of a view that the government is taking teachers, parents and learners for a ride. To date, the government has not submitted capitation for Form 1s, even as they move to the second term. That means schools have had to find alternative ways to provide tuition, accommodation and meals to thousands of Form 1s. Teachers and parents fear that the Term 1 money may never be submitted and could end up in some people's pockets. Teachers don't deserve this kind of strain. The government must therefore release all capitation money to all schools before they reopen for the second term. We see an equally pedestrian and dismissive approach to the doctor's strike and its impact on ordinary Kenyans. There seems to be neither commitment nor capacity by the government to resolve the matter. We take the position that government must immediately respect and implement the 2021 court ruling which directed the Ministry of Health and the 47 county governments to implement the basic salary as per the agreed, signed and registered collective bargaining agreement of 2017-2021. In line with the demands of the striking doctors, the government must ring fence, ring fence health finances by operationalizing the facility improvement fund. We support the call by doctors for the government to allocate at least 15% of its budget to health and to devolve the resources to the counties. We equally support calls by doctors for annual and incremental recruitment of doctors and other healthcare workers until the country attains the recommended levels of staffing for various levels of facilities. That is what the government does with teachers, police and military. Finally, we have reviewed one of the most dubious scandals running in the country currently the scandal of fake fertilizers being distributed to farmers by government agencies and also being disowned by those same agencies within government. It is a scam that goes to the heart of our very survival as a nation. Coming right in the middle of a planting season, the presence and distribution of fake fertilizer and seeds is nothing more than economic sabotage. We therefore reiterate that heads must roll. Officers at the Ministry of Agriculture and those at the Kenya Bureau of Standards and the National Cereals and Produce Board who have direct responsibility for fertilizer, seeds and certif certification must immediately quit their positions and pave way for proper and professional investigations. Those found to be responsible for these criminal activities of supplying fake seeds and fertilizer must be charged with sabotage and engagement in organized criminal activity. The government must immediately devise new ways to procure, secure and distribute quality fertilizer and seeds to farmers who are running out of time. We reiterate that in view of the current delays and confusion over fertilizers, the prices of a product be subsidized further and reduced from the current 2,500 for 50 kg uh, bag to 1,500 as a show of remorse and apology and respect to our farmers. That is the end of the statement. I am sure it is clear and there will be no questions. Perfect. Look at which. <coughs>
too. Somebody would ask, like, uh, if you are conducting elections on 27th, which body is going to oversee this election, given that you have disbanded your NEP and the steering committee is not yet properly constituted? Two, are you going to do a manual election? Well, first of all, I wish you would know that uh, as a committee... Yes, the, the Central Committee did propose certain changes to election management within the party. Those proposals were sent to the Legal Committee, who have drafted the necessary amendments to our instruments. Uh, the party will be having its NEC meeting next week on the 12th for 11th, yes, for adoption of those changes. And thereafter, we will be holding a National Governing Council to adopt those changes. So we have our full timetable to ensure that all of those things are in place before the 27th. Uh, secondly, as to the method that will be used, the rules of the party are clear. All those methods that you have spoken about are actually proper methods of elections in ODM. So the board, the electoral election committee, will be sitting with uh, our members in the regions, because not all regions are the same. They'll be determining which method best suits which region. Any other question? I thank you. I thank you very much. Thank you.